welcome back to my let's develop implementing a Conway scheme of life. My name is Sven and I'm going to take you on board for a second uh, episode. Um, as I already started to discuss last episode, I'm really annoyed by uh, how the tests we wrote look like because there's really a lot of a, a large amount of repetition here and in my experience it gets really a pain in the ass to have this much repetition in tests because if you at some point going to change uh, some kind of implementation uh, parts change the API or something um, in the actual unit under test class then it's going to be a huge amount of work changing all these single tests and uh, in my experience that keeps you from from doing refactorings which really shouldn't because the test the test suits should uh, should really support your refactorings um as i also mentioned last time uh, there's a, a feature uh, in in the n unit uh, implementation you can use in the .NET environment that really lets you define such tests uh, quite easily and actually I found with a little googling that there is an altern alternative uh, or uh, an equivalent to this test case uh, feature of n unit actually available for j unit with a little extension which uh, I found on the Google Code page. And the uh, nice thing is that this is available through Maven. So I'm just going to try this, give this a try and see if this is actually usable. So uh, I'm going to quickly add this, uh, this dependency to, uh, to my project and see whether this actually works. What we have to do uh, to to use it is to uh, give an additional or a different JUnit runner, which is called JUnit params runner. I'm going to use this to execute my tests. And uh, what I can do now is I can add a parameters annotation and give this annotation my test parameter values unfortunately i'm not free in the in the type i specify for the parameter values but i have to encode them as strings which uh, is somehow not so nice and i'm not sure if this is going to work out with uh, the enumeration we're actually using here but We'll, we'll see, we'll see. I'm just going to try this. So I'm going to say cell, cell state alive, comma, zero neighbors, and cell, cell state dead. This is what I expect. And it should be a cell state initial state, uh, actually a number saying number of neighbors and the cell state saying whoops little typo here um, expected state and now I want to change this test and say okay this is the initial state this is the number of neighbors and this is the expected state and I'm, re I'm really excited to see if this is going to work. Expected state. Where is the typo? There is the typo. Expected state. So now it's working. And let's try it out. Okay, this is not working at all. Why is this not working at all? Because it cannot parse the cell enumeration thing. So let's see if there's some explanation to this let's see let's see let's see can i give this it's working with integers it's working with 
tools is working with actually persons I really don't like the alternative it doesn't really look good does it does not really look that good <laughs> Is there any nicer, nicer way to actually do this? Can I pat, can I can I somehow use strings? It would be really nice to use strings here actually. But I fear I cannot use strings here. It really 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 hurts. I would really like to use a string here. But it appears that it's not, not possible to do that, is it? This is a sad thing, really, th really sad. Can I use this as strings? Uh, sorry, different keyword. Again, implementing C sharp. And then I could use the cell state. Value of initial state. Is this going to work out? This is uh, no enum constant life. Oh, this actually the actually this variant is going to work. It seems, which would be quite nice. If this could work, expected that would was self state that this is actually this is actually really nice. So I can work with strings even though that's an unfortunately not documented, and I can actually implement my test like this. Is this right? This test should pass now. Yes, this test actually passes. This is nice. This is no, I like it. I like it. So let me just give this some shorter names because I really don't like like these long ones and uh, let me extract this to initial state and Wrong key combination. Expected state. So this is actually the test I'm going to have, and what I'm now, what I what I can do now, is I can uh, rename the test to something. Uh, should fulfill transition, and now I can. Probably this is one string, so I can give him more strings and say live one dead. Is this correct? That's how I understand this this rule. Alive one dead. This is nice. So I can actually now use this to specify all the different uh all the different rules. So there's eight rules starting from life to six, seven, eight for all the transitions. Oh, there's actually nine ones, yeah, makes sense. And we're going to survive for exactly these two. This should be the tests, right? So now these imp these imp this implements all my surviving rules, which are these. And now I'm going to implement also the nine remaining rules, which I currently did not implement, which start from the dead state, and actually say, okay. 
you little man, stay dead, except for the case where I have three neighbors, which is the reproduction rule we implemented before. So I can even remove this one and I actually see that there's exactly one case where my logic is currently faulty, which is the case where I start in the dead state, have two neighbors, and I want to stay in the dead state, but actually uh, my logic currently returns a life. So this is the only case where I actually need to respect the, the cell state uh, for, for the calculation of the return value. Um, but since I want to have this whole thing readable, is it's I think it's nicer to actually say okay, if my current state is alive, I'm going to do this. Uh, if the other case it's going to be dead, then only in, or it currently is dead then only in the case of three I'm going to return a life and in the other cases I'm going to return dead whatever that doesn't work so this is my implementation quick formatting and now it should fulfill all the tests right so I'm not really sure yet whether I think this looks better or worse than before but uh, one thing is for sure I cannot even scroll in this file anymore so I just reduced a, let's say 100 lines file to uh, uh, for uh, it was more than 100 lines like a 200 lines file to a 50 lines file which is actually really nice because if I change anything to the API uh, I just have these uh, three to five lines depending on how you count to change so it would be really easy to adjust all the tests and the rules are given in a really simple format so I really like that change uh, yeah but I think this is really really discussable point so if you have any thought on that any remarks uh, feel free to comment and give feedback and yeah, that's it for today, so see you in the next episode.